What do you want to do a thing like that for? Oh, you hit me, O'Hanlon. You swung your bail right at me and hit me. It's not true. I never touched you. You calling me a liar, Mick? Oh, that's the truth. Excuse me, I've work to do. <laughs> Did it again. You hit me, didn't you? I said you hit me, you lousy pot licker. <laughs>
taken all our jobs, I'm gonna send you back to Ireland in a box! <laughs> He's been asking for it. Good for you, O'Hanlon. Virginia O'Hanlon, turn around. Virginia O'Hanlon, touch the ground. Virginia O'Hanlon, show your shoes. Virginia, why'd you stop? I've got a rocker something in my shoe. Maybe Santa Claus will bring in new pair of shoes for Christmas, Virginia. These are just fine. They were just fine. On time, well, maybe. Now, they're junk. Maybe Santa will bring a pot of gold from Maria Dinelli. Oh, poo. Besides, everyone knows there's no such thing as Santa Claus. That's not true. Virginia's right. Oh, how would you know? Have you ever seen him? What's he look like, Virginia? Mm. I mean, in real life. Ever see him? Sure she has. We all have. There's that one in the street corner last year ringing a bell and asking for money. Virginia means the real Santa Claus. The one who eats all the cookies and milk we leave him. Your parents do that. Julie's right. No, she's not. Of course there's a real Santa Claus. And of course Virginia hasn't seen him in real life. Well, then how can you believe in something you can't even see? I believe in God, even though I can't see him. Come on, are we going to play or not? Maria. Okay, O'Hanlon, Danelli, that's it for both of you. I suppose you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. I heard you started another fight again, O'Hanlon. What is it with you, Irish? You're an angry lot, aren't you? Mr. Chambers, I had nothing to do with starting that fight. But you had everything to do with finishing it, didn't you? <laughs> O'Hanlon, you got a lot of spunk. But on this dock, I need workers, not troublemakers. Now, you're through. And that goes for you, too, Danelli. Please, Mr. Chambers, Danelli was just trying to help. I had one of me back and one of my face. It's okay, Jim. No, damn it, it's not okay. It's Goss who's always trying to start it. This time he knocked me over. He called me a mick and a, a pot licker. But Goss may be a bicket, and he may do some stupid things around here every once in a while. But he's been on this dock and on his job a lot longer than the both of you. And he pulls his weight, O'Hanlon. But I don't. Danelli and I don't pull our weight. How would you know? You're never out here in the cold and the rain and the snow. You never lift anything more than a pencil inside where it's warm. I got two good men to replace him, Mr. Chambers. You hear that? That's what's behind all of this. I can't believe a man be stupid as you are. To... Now, wait a minute, Mick. I've had just about enough of you. Oh, Mick, is it? But so have I. There's other jobs. Then go find one. We'll find two. About those two men, Mr. Chambers. They're young, strong, good boys. Uh, my nephews. Talk about it later. Well, they're good men. Oh, somebody get me a blanket.
church. Thanks, Tom. Did you have any luck? No. How's your missus? Is this scene. James, you were gone in the dead of the night. I heard there was a job at the power company. You was there? Sure. But there were also a hundred men wanting to fill it. That's what comes from reading yesterday's newspaper. Can I have some more? Uh, may I? May I? Well, Sean. He may have the rest of mine. I'm all filled up. Virginia. I'll take it. You'll find something, James. I will. But right now I've come home to find some tea. And to look upon the bright and shiny faces of the O'Hanlon clan before they go off to school. And listen to Mrs. Futterman tell us the world isn't flat. You'd better pay close attention to Mrs. Futterman, young fellow. We'll be going out again, James. As soon as I finish this bit of nourishment. What about you, Evie? Have you had your breakfast? No, I, I have. Good. Well, then, I'll walk Virginia and Sean down the block. Uh... I'm stopping upstairs at Maria's. Her mother's still pretty sick. Dominic didn't find any work? No. Come on, eat up then, bucko. We must be off. You to learn and me to earn. That's the spirit. Trouble is, there's too damn much spirit, not enough damn jobs. James, the children. You're right. But then aren't we lucky they do favor your side of the family, don't they? Can I get you something to eat, Mr. Church? Mr. Church, something to eat? Good morning, Mr. Barrington. Arthur. Hello, gentlemen of the press. Look who's here. Or is it still here? Lay you off, Cornelius. Shut up, George. The great roving reporter. The egalitarian editorializer, Frank himself, Church. Come on, Cornelius. Let's have a drink. The great controversialist, friend and would-be champion of the common man, would-be slayer of the capitalist dragon, dreaming up more drivel against the dreaded aristocracy. Men like my uncle, right, Mr. Church? 
Leave him alone. Let's eat and get back to the paper. Ah, uh, sure. If you're looking for Dr. Livingston, Mr. Church, he's already been found. In Africa. Not in a bottle. Mr. Mitchell. That last paragraph stinks. Cut it. Hey, Teddy, come here. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Have you seen Frank? Uh, he went out. Out where? Uh, out the door, Mr. Mitchell. I don't know where. When? Uh, hours ago, maybe two. When you see him come back through that door, tell him I want to see him right away. Yes, sir. He didn't give you any copy on that Shame of Greatness article, did he? No, Mr. Mitchell. Here, study that. You might grow up to be a great reporter yourself someday. Mr. Mitchell. What is it, Miss Borland? Did you like my story on the Vanderbilt Bowl? I printed it, didn't I? Well, half of it. That was the half I liked. Thank you again for the opportunity, Mr. Mitchell. Teddy. What do you need, Miss Borland? Some information. I'm uh, sorry, ma'am. We don't serve ladies escorted or unescorted. Why not? I don't know. I just work here, and we just serve gentlemen. Well, have you served a gentleman named Church? Francis P. Church. Mr. Church. Mr. Church. Well, well, well. And where's your tambourine? What tambourine? Aren't you with the uh, Salvation Army? No, I'm Andrea Borland from the New York Sun, and you know it. I do, huh? And uh, what else do I know? Well, you ought to know that Mr. Mitchell is looking for you. Edward P. Mitchell is looking for me? He's always looking for me lately. He's also looking for that article. What article? Oh, that article. Uh, the shame of greatness. What a shame. Mr. Church, it's probably none of my business. That's right, Miss Borden. Your business is um, society, isn't it? Teas and balls and co cotillions and such. Mr. Church, have you finished the article? The article? Miss Bolin, just about finished. There has to be a finish to every story. A finish. To the story.
Anne. How did your day go? Oh, not as hoped, Mrs. Goldstein. Oh, still no job? Afraid not. Oh, well, something will turn up. As my dear dead soul used to say, it isn't the silver lining what makes the coat. It's the person wearing it. Well, I'll try to remember that, Mrs. Goldstein. God will sign me, dear. God be with you, Mr. O'Henlin. Must be soon. Nothing, James? Evie, what do we do about Christmas? Now, don't you worry yourself. I've near completed a few wee things I'm knitting for the little ones to see them through the winter. I do it when Sean and Virginia are at school. Oh, oh, now I see what I've gone and done. What, love? <laughs> I just let slip that there might be a little something for you under the tree this year, too. Oh, Evie, let's not even think about a tree this year. And where are you getting the yarn you've been doing all that knitting with? Well, that's not important. Well, it is to me. I haven't been able to buy you any. Evie, where's your shawl? The one your mother sent you for ministry? The one she knitted for you to keep you warm? Oh, Evie. The yarn from that shawl was enough to make four items, James. Four gifts for my loved ones. And besides, it was my shawl. I don't see why I can't do with it as I please. I have this old sweater I'm wearing, and I'm quite warm enough, thank you. And if it's warmth I need, James O'Hanlon, I know where to find it. Oh, do you now? <laughs> well, you know better than to mix with an old dark fighter like me. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell? What is it, Miss Boylan? You want back the other half of your Vanderbilt piece? No, sir. What have you got there? Something I overlooked for my front page? I ran into Frank Church when I went out to eat. He wasn't feeling well, but he wanted me to give you that. Is that so? Tell you something, Miss Boylan. Yes, sir. Drunk. Frank Church is still the best newspaper man in this or any other town. And Miss Borland. Yes, sir. Frank Church wasn't always a drunk. Only since his wife and baby died almost a year ago. Bless your heart. Hi, Mama. Papa. Hello, darling. How are my two best girls today? Hello, Mr. O'Hanlon. Oh, and how was school? Tell me what you learned. I learned just what Maria did two years ago in the same class. Well, that makes sense. Virginia got an A on her English test. English? Yuck. Who cares if you don't put capitals on the right words? Can't see them when you're talking anyway. You'll be caring, young man, if you don't get at least a B on the subject. Your paper's the sun, right, Papa? That's right. Does that mean I'll get tanned by the sun? <laughs> oh, he's a funny one, isn't he? How's your mother today, Maria? Not so good, Mrs. O'Hanlon. She still coughs a lot. It scares Papa, my sister, and me. I'm sure it must. Is there anything I can do? Besides some medicine, I think Mama needs some company most. 
She's most always alone. She can't go out. Well, I can. So you tell her I'll pop up to see her a little more often. Will you do that, dear? I'll tell her. Your father's have a no-luck job hunting either, then? No, sir. Will you tell your father I'm very sorry? I feel like it's my fault. I'll tell him. And don't feel bad, Mr. O'Hanlon. Papa says you two will be working together again. I better be going now. Oh, and Maria. Tell your mother I'll make a pot of soup and bring some up. That and prayer is the best medicine. Hmm? Papa prays all the time. Sometimes I think God must have too much on his mind already. And Virginia, you remember to say a special Christmas prayer for Mrs. Donnelly. I will, Mama. And she'll get well. That's all Maria wants for Christmas. For her mother to get well. That's all she wants from Santa Claus. The shame of greatness. Good stuff, Frank. Very good stuff. You working on that Tammany Hall story? How's it coming? It's coming. Will it be finished in time to give the boys at City Hall a Christmas present? It's going to blow the pants off the boys at City Hall. If you print it. You write it, Francis. I'll print it. the politicians about that bridge. That's the way I'd like to be able to write someday, Mr. Church. With both fists. Like John L. Sullivan. Yes, sir. A real humdinger. In case you haven't heard, John L. Sullivan is no longer champion. He was beat by James J. Corbett, who was then beat by Bob Fitzsimmons. Yes, sir, I know that. But as far as I'm concerned, John L. Sullivan will always be the champion. Yes, sir. A real humdinger. Ask the captains of industry. Ask the robber barons. Ask the politicians about that bridge. Mr. Mitchell doesn't cut half of this. Take this to coffee. Miss Borland. Yes? I suppose you expect me to thank you. For what? Don't be precious. For writing that article and bylining my name. No, Mr. Church. I owe you thanks. Do you remember lecturing a journalism class at NYU a few years ago? Not particularly. Well, I was one of three females in that class. I was ready to quit until that day. It's because of what you said that I didn't. What you said and what you've written. Uh, Miss Boland. So please, accept my thanks. Besides, they were your ideas. All I did was rearrange a few words. If you say so. But about that article, tomorrow it will be yesterday's newspaper and you can wrap a fish in it. What do you mean? I mean nothing that you or I or anybody else writes for a newspaper has a lifespan of more than 24 hours. I don't believe that. That's your privilege. And your delusion. Now, if you'll excuse me. Uh, by the way, 
What happened to the other two females in that class? They got married. They showed uncommonly good common sense. Buy something or just touch it all? I'm sorry. I was just looking. Looking and touching, touching and looking. Thinking of taking something too? No. I have to watch you little kids all the time. There's a law against stealing, you know. I wasn't going to steal anything. Honest. Your old man's still out of work, right? Yes. You but... little beggars are all the same. Do you hear me begging? Just move along, why don't you? But I've got money. I've got money, but I won't be spending it here. Daily, get your son, daily. Daily, daily, get your son, daily. Daily, daily. How much? Two cents. You want a paper, little girl? Not now. Thanks, anyway. OK. Daily, daily. Who's calling my name? Ah, hello there, puss. <laughs> well, it looks like you and me both could use a friend right now, eh? What did you say, Tommy? Should we be friends? Should we be friends? Which one is it? They both look like thieves to me. Grab him. He's the man you want. Look, he's got a knife. I was waiting right over there when he came running outside. What were we waiting for? My newspaper. They sell them on the corners, Bob, not in the alleys. Yesterday's newspaper in the trash. Which one was it? Surely one of you people can, can identify this man as a thief. Well, I don't think I can help you, officers. I'm O'Hara. Well, where's your kitchen help? Misery. Sure, he knows me. He knows I'm waiting there every day for my newspaper. Misery's out on an errand. And what's going on here? A thief. One of these two men come up behind me, knocked me over the head, and stole the money out of the cash box. Well, then that's it, isn't it? The thief would have the money on him, wouldn't he? Get him! Get him! That's it, that's it. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Well, not really worth going to jail for. But a decent day's take in these times, I suppose. Put him in. 
I'll get you for this. You'll see. I'll get you. Get it. Oh, lucky day for you. Senior Officer Flynn, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Um... James O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon, huh? It's a good name. Quick thinking. And uh, good with your fist, too. Oh, thank you, sir. I apologize for the mistake. No harm done. I can't thank you enough, Mr. O'Hanlon. It's true, business ain't been so good lately, and I can't offer your reward. But might I offer yourself and your family a bit of fresh baked bread and some cold cuts? Well, sir, I... Please, Mr. O'Hanlon, it's the least I could do. Well, I'm sure my family would be very grateful. Well, come on inside, then. I'll serve you a hot Irish while I get your things. That would be grand. Tis the season. Miss Borland. Andrea Borland. Have we met? Well, just now. Then how do you know my name? I'm a newspaper man, Miss Borland. Cornelius Barrington. It's my business to know things and people. You're a damn fine writer. Uh, you've read my society pieces? No. Your article, The Shame of Greatness? I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do. We both do. How would you like to work for my paper, The Chronicle? Do you own The Chronicle, Mr. Barrington? No, but my uncle does, and that makes things easy for the both of us. Of course, you'd have to take a slightly different perspective of things. What things? Well, you could start by writing an expose. Call it The Ghost of Frank Church. Revealing how you wrote that piece. I did no such thing, Mr. Barrington. And I strongly advise you to be extremely careful about what you say or write. Really? Why? Because my uncle is a lawyer. A damn fine lawyer. And that makes it easy for both of us. Mr. O'Hanlon. Your paper. Oh, of course. Thanks, Misery. He's right. I tell you, the man's absolutely right. What is it, James? Who's right? The man who wrote this article in The Sun. It's entitled The Shame of Greatness. Well, what's it about? It's about this country. Children, listen to this. We have become a great nation, but at what cost? Ask the red man, the black man, the immigrant, the elderly, the ill. We have built a railroad across the 45 states and bridges across rivers, but there is no bridge of brotherhood. Why? Because there is no profit in that bridge. Ask the captains of industry. Ask the robber barons. Ask the politicians about that bridge. I tell you, he's absolutely right. It's hard to believe that 50 years ago, our people came to this country because they were starving in Ireland. Potato famine indeed. High rents, ha! It's no different over here. James, you stop it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. If I hear one more time about how poor we are, how hungry we are, we've got our health, we've got our family together, we've got a roof over our heads and blankets on our beds. And God. We have God. Now, you can be poor if you want to, James O'Hanlon, but not me. I'm rich, and I grow richer every day of my life. Oh, yes, Evie, darling. You and the Vanderbilts and the Morgans don't have a worry in the world. Daddy, who are the Vanderbilts and the Morgans? A couple of neighbors who live just little ways across Manhattan. And here is your evening cape, Mr. Van Dubilt. Just as good as... as it was this morning. Well, thank you very kindly, Mrs. Morgan. <laughs> trouble with something, darling? No, Mama. Just thinking. I've had a feeling there's been something on your mind. More than something. Well, then. Let's talk about it. Papa. Is there a Santa Claus?
Well, Virginia, what makes you ask a question like that? Because all my friends say... Mm, all most of my friends say... There's no such thing. They say Santa Claus is a lie. They say somebody made him up. To make the children think he brings the presents. Instead of the parents. Well, what would people want to do a thing like that for? You mean make it up? Yes. I don't know. But if you take the time to pick something, you know, out at the store, you'd want the person you're giving it to to know what came from you, wouldn't you? I'm well, sure I would. And so would Santa Claus. Tell me true, Papa. Do you think there's really a Santa Claus? Virginia, I like to look on the bright side. See this paper? Mm -hmm. I can sort of smell it, too. <laughs> well, never mind that. This paper lets me know what's going on around us, around the world. It's like taking a world trip. It keeps me informed. It gives me confidence that people do indeed achieve their goals. It also reminds me that many people don't, but for the most part, I like to read the good news. I never read the obituaries. Oh, what's the ob obituary? Mm -hmm. Tells of death. I prefer to read about life. Uh, do you think your paper could tell me if there's a Santa Claus? Virginia, if you see it in the sun, it's so. Thanks, Papa. Dear Editor, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Virginia O'Hanlon. Good evening, Mr. Church. In a hurry? Well, that's all right. I've already conveyed my congratulations on the shame of greatness to Miss Borland. You see, Otho, Mr. Church knows all about shame. He attacks the captains of industry, the railroad builders, the robber barons, the exploiters, and then shamelessly exploits the talents of his young lady friend. Nice cozy setup you've got there, Church. What else does she do for you? Don't even think of getting physical. In the first place, you're out of shape. In the second place, I've done some fighting. Captain of the Yale boxing team, you know. I've done some fighting myself, Captain. Around Hell's Kitchen. Good night, Otho. Good night, Mr. Church. Virginia, how are you, Lepian? I'm sorry, I startled you. No, not really, Mr. Scully. Ah, a letter for Santa, maybe? Not exactly, but it's about him. Well, why not to Santa himself? I'm not so sure I'd get an answer. Ah, I see. Yeah, Santa is pretty busy right now. But how can you be sure that this party will answer, huh? Papa says that the son tells him everything he wants to know. 
Virginia, if you see it in the sun, it's so. <laughs> well then, it's best you get it mailed. And the sooner the better. But I don't have a stamp, you see. Ah. Could I buy one? I have a penny. Is that enough? Yeah, sure. But keep your penny. Let Otto Schuller take care of it, huh? My gift to you, Liebchen. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much, Mr. Schuller. And I will see that it gets there safely. Bye. Thank you very much. Someday, Mr. Church, I'm going to have a watch like that. What? I said I'm going to have a watch like that. One that's pure gold and plays a tune. Yes, sir, a real humdinger. Teddy! Sure you will. down to City Hall. I got a hot tip. Well, don't let it cool off. No, I won't.
Who is it? Ed Mitchell. Just a minute. What is it, Mitch? Happened to be in the neighborhood. Oh, you did? Well, can I come in? You want a drink? No, thanks. Well, what do you want? You must want something. No, uh, just uh, a visit uh, and an invitation. Martha wanted me to ask you if you'd come over for Christmas dinner. You could have asked at the paper. I suppose I could. Are you all right, Frank? Why, you got complaints? No complaints. Because there are other papers, you know. Frank, you've got to stop torturing yourself. Oh, I do? Sure. Took me many more years than most men to find the right woman and marry her. You know, she could have had a pick of about 100 better men than me. Young and with the stuff that proper husbands are made of. It wasn't your fault. There was an epidemic. A lot of other wives died. Sure they did. And they died with their husbands at their side. But not Elizabeth and the baby. Do you realize, Mitch, that we were married for more than three years and not once did I have Christmas dinner with her? Not once. The first year, it was a flood in Pennsylvania, and then it was a revolution in Asia. And when she was dying from pneumonia, I was in Panama writing about yellow fever. Elizabeth married a newspaper man. She knew that, and she loved you. Did you ever hear her complain? No, I didn't hear her complain. I never heard, and I noticed a lot about her. Then it was too late. Sure you won't have a drink, uh, you know, a close to Christmas drink. I'm sure. Frank, you won't try to. Don't worry. I'm still married to the newspaper, old pal. And I promise I'll be a good husband. Let me know about Christmas dinner. What are you doing? A little chilly in here. Yeah, that's better. I've got an interesting assignment for you, Frank. I've already got one. The Tammany Hall expose, you remember? This won't take long. And I've got a deadline. What is it? It's newspaper business. I'll tell you at the office tomorrow. Good night. Mitch. Thanks for lighting that heater. Wouldn't want to die from pneumonia now, would I? No. You wouldn't. Virginia, how nice to see you. Your mama stopped by earlier. Mama said she would, Miss Stanelli. She said she'd bring some soup. <coughs> Did 
you have some? She makes good soup, doesn't she? I'll get you some, Mama. Good, Maria. Virginia's mommy brought by some soup. Give some to Grace, Maria. And you have a bowl, too. Oh, be sure to save a little for your father. Here, Mama. There's enough for everybody. I better be going. Bye, Grace. Bye, Mrs. Donnelly. See you tomorrow, Virginia. Mm -hmm. The soup will help, Mama. You're gonna feel better. But you've got to try. What can I do for you? I'm looking for work. Doing what? Anything. I can pull ill. Hey, I take care of that. I can wait tables. Everyone here gets their own. How about a cleanup? You say my place is dirty? Well, you can't as ugly hit over the floor. Well, you can't exactly eat off the tables either. <laughs> I can't pay much. I'd welcome anything. Now you understand this is just for today. My regular man will be back tomorrow. Pays 40 cents. I appreciate it, Mr. Fanutis. It's food for my family. Danelli, where I come from, that's women's work. Right, boys? Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, this here's one of them. Couldn't handle a man's job. <laughs> Why don't you leave her alone? Why don't you stick to your beer? Hey, Danelli, I'd like you to meet my nephews, Mo and Leah. Looks like you missed some here. <laughs> and over here. <laughs> He's a slacker. All them wops are. Yeah, and they stink, too. Hey, maybe this will take the smell away. It's your boyfriend. Don't! Don't! Let it be.
now, Dominic, you wouldn't. I wouldn't. The hell I wouldn't. Don't worry. You'll be paid. It's the best cleanup job I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, here's more from Cuba. They killed Colonel Ruiz. What? Yeah, it looks like things are heating up down there. Yeah. You want me to follow up on this? Sure. Okay. Frank? Nice, crisp day, huh, Frank? All right, Mitch. What's the assignment? Frank, we've worked together nearly two decades. Oh, you've been doing most of the work while I sit here gaining weight and losing my eyesight. You've covered wars, famines, fires, floods, anarchists, contagious diseases. Well, that's my job. Uh, and there's nobody better at it. Are you sure your middle initial isn't B for Barnum and Bunkum? <laughs> yeah. uh, this could be the toughest assignment I've ever given you. Big? Very big. Important. Very important. Is this dangerous? Could be. You mean you don't know? I know that you're the man to do this job. Is this your idea of a joke? Oh, it's my idea of an assignment. I write editorials, remember? That's what I get paid for. I know what you get paid for. This is going to be an editorial. Mitch, you said it yourself. Crime, corruption, controversy. That's what I write. Not this time. Besides, this is controversial. Why don't you give it to that female reporter you hired. Because they want to give it to you. I don't know anything about this. Oh, Frank, even you were a kid once. Yeah, it took me a lot of years to get over it. Nobody ever gets over it. Frank, if you can answer this question, then you'll have answered a lot of other questions as well. You just may not like my answer. I'll take that risk. Frank, maybe, just maybe, when all your other editorials have been forgotten, when all the issues of today are resolved, a hundred years from now, when there are new issues to be considered, some kid will still be asking this same question, and you, Frank P. Church, will have already written the answer. And you, Edward P. Mitchell, will print what I write? You write it, Francis. I'll print it. This is fun. Andy, you Mr. Church, I've just finished this article. May I ask your opinion? Yes, you may, if you're going to Brody's Bar and Grill. Uh, but it's uh, for men only, isn't it? Teddy? Copy. Yes, Miss Borland. And Teddy, I'm going out. On an assignment, Miss Borland? A real humdinger. Hi, Mr. Church. Uh, one for the road. One bottle. Thank you, Mr. Church. If you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus?
morning, Mrs. Goldstein. What a pleasant surprise. Good morning. I hate to ask, but could you nice people take this brisket off my hands? I don't understand. Well, ever since my dear dead soul left me, three years ago now, September, I always cook too much. It's a habit, you know. I would really appreciate if you would take this and enjoy with your family. Um. Well, it's the finest. Oh, Saul left me well off enough, you know. Well, it's, it's very sweet of you. If, if you're sure that you can't... I can't, won't, couldn't. It's too much, I tell you. Well, it's, it's very kind of you to think of us. Will you come in for a cup of tea? Oh, no. No, thank you, anyway. Well, enjoy. And a Merry Christmas. Oh, and a Happy Hanukkah to you, Mrs. Goldstein. God bless you. He always has. Goldstein brought by some beef brisket. No, sir, hers. She says she always makes too much. Mm. At least I don't believe that for a minute. Mm. Everything right with you this morning, James? It's the day before Christmas, Evie. How should it be? There's no tree, no gifts for the children. Well, we have food for our table. And who put it there? Surely not me. A lonely old lady who cooks too much. Well, it's not where it came from that's important. It's the thought. The thought? Evie, I think, too. Every day of the week, I think of how I can't even help my own family. James. Maybe I've been all wrong. Maybe it's the thieves and the liars and the cheats are right. They just take what they need without thinking about right or wrong. James O'Hanlon, you certainly don't practice what you preach. What's that supposed to mean? You're a fine one to be telling your little girl about the gift of friendship and love. That's exactly what she is, Evie, a little girl. She's too young to know the hard truth. That'll come soon enough. You keep your voice down. You'll raise the children. I'm sorry. I'm just tired. I'm tired of doing nothing. I want to work. I need to work to provide for my family. You have faith, James. Faith, Evie, damn it, I'm running out of faith. I'm sorry, children. There was a crazy man here a minute ago. But he's gone now. Yeah, Papa. It's okay. Really. Mrs. O'Hanlon? Yes? Is Mr. O'Hanlon at home? Yes. What is it? Mr. O'Hanlon? Would you come down to the station with us, please? What's this about? It'll all be explained down at the station. Is my pa being arrested? Of course he isn't, Sean. Is he officers? Mr. O'Hanlon is wanted for questioning in the matter of the robbery at O'Hara's Bar and Grill a short time back. But I've told the police everything I know. Police officers, it's Christmas Eve. We are very well aware of that fact, Mr. O'Hanlon. We have families, too. It's that thief, isn't it? He said it even the score. You see what I mean, Evie? Mr. O'Hanlon. Please. All right. Maybe that crazy man wasn't so crazy after all. Sign of your father yet, children? No, Mom. 
Mama. Well, all right, but you wrap up warm. I will, Mama. Can I come too? No, Sean, I'll be right back. I never get to go any place. Ready. Right here, Mr. Church. Oh, say, that article was a, a real... real humdinger. You bet. Teddy, I have a present for you. Now, it isn't gold, and it doesn't play a tune, but it was my first watch, and it helped me start the day for many years. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Mr. Church. Merry Christmas, I... Merry Christmas, sir. Francis, you've given us all, including yourself, a very Merry Christmas. Thanks. Mitch. <clears throat> If it's still okay, I'd be glad to have Christmas dinner with you and Martha. Excellent. Excellent. Ms. Boland, you're very adept at following people. Uh, I had hoped you wouldn't notice. Yeah, well, I did. Mr. Church? I wonder if you'd mind following me somewhere. There has to be a finish to every story. All right, children, set the Christmas decorations aside for now and we'll get something to eat, shall we? I think we thought about that all day. Your father will be home soon. I'm sure he'll be hungry. Merry Christmas. Oh, Jay, darling, we were so worried. Where, what happened? What's all this? What is it, Papa? Tell us, tell us. What is it? I said it's a it? Merry Christmas. Do you like it? It's the most beautiful cut-down tree I've ever seen. It's great, Papa. Really great. James O'Hanlon, if you don't tell me what this is all about, I'm going to faint or scream or both. Virginia, will you kindly place the presents around the tree? Now, mind you, don't step on them, Sean. I won't, Papa. You bet I won't. Now, Evie, I don't want you to faint or scream, but just listen. To make a long tale a short one, I... Oh, speaking of tales, pardon me. Papa. He was a friend when I needed one. James, how can we afford to be feeding a kitten now? Not much less all this. Let him eat brisket. Oh. <laughs> Come now, let me tell you what's happened. Come on. It seems that that fella that I helped to catch in the alleyway behind O'Hara's has got himself an attorney. And since he'll be going to trial, I had to sign some legal papers, you understand. Yeah. 
Well, he won't be getting away, though, because it seems he also has quite a record in Chicago. In fact, he's wanted so much there that they've offered a small reward. <gasps> there you are, darling. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes, of course, that's all I've got left after I bought the tree and the gifts and some food. Uh, I'll make it stretch. Just for one week. I had another surprise waiting for me down at the police station. What more? It seems that the fair city of New York has a need for police officers. And after the incident at O'Hara's, and at Senior Officer Flynn's suggestion, they've asked me to become one of New York's finest. <laughs> they said, and I'm quoting here, they said that I displayed extreme heroism. Are you going to ride a horse, Papa? Can I ride it? Can I name it? Oh, what a bright goose of a boy. That may come, Sean, lad, but first there'll be some training. I start the day after Christmas. Oh, Papa, I'm so proud of you. Well, I hope that Maria will have cause to be proud of her Papa as well. What do you mean? There's a chance that Dom Dinelli will be joining the force, too. Oh, I wonder how that came about. And Officer Flynn said the precinct needed several good men, and so... That will be the best medicine for Maria's mother. Mm-hmm. You hear that, Nikki? Ain't it? <laughs> Maria's gonna get her Christmas wish from Santa. Nikki? Yeah! After St. Nicholas. At least his name isn't Santa or Claus. Claus. <laughs> oh, Sean. Oh. I'm going to start the dinner. Yes, Martha, I'll pick up the cooking sherry on the way home. No, no, I won't be late. Yes, yes, Martha. <clears throat> yes, Martha, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, Frank Church. We'll be joining us for Christmas dinner. Uh, and Martha, he just might bring a friend. Can we open our presents tonight, Papa? Absolutely not. Christmas morning, as usual. It's tradition, Sean. Indeed it is. Oh, that is a grand meal, Levy. Christmas briskets. You can't ask for better than that, can you? We are fortunate, James. Well, what's this? It's for you, Papa. It can't wait till tomorrow. It'll be too late. Is it something you made? No. I found a penny. I wish I had something for everybody. Being my daughter is gift enough. Go on, Papa. Open your present. Well, all right. We'll make an exception this time, since tomorrow will be too late. Today's paper soft for today's. Not a soggy, smelly one from yesterday. But how did you manage to... <laughs> the newsboy let me buy it for a penny. It was his last paper. Thank you, Virginia. I love you. And I love you too, Papa. Well, now... I won't be reading the Help Wanted column anymore, will I? <laughs> but the world goes on. Sean, you put that cat down and you come and help me with these dishes. Oh, no. <laughs> Would you all come in here a moment? There's something I think you should be hearing. Right on the front page. Is there a Santa Claus? We take pleasure in answering at once, and thus prominently, the communication below, expressing at the same time our great gratification that its faithful author is numbered among the friends of the sun. Dear editor, I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says, if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? And it's signed, Virginia O'Hanlon. Well, Papa, what does it say? Virginia, your little friends are wrong. They have been affected by the skepticism of a skeptical age. They do not believe except what they see. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible by their little minds. All minds, Virginia, whether they be men's or children's, are little. 
In this great universe of ours, man is a mere insect, an ant in his intellect, as compared with the boundless world about him, as measured by the intelligence capable of grasping the whole truth and knowledge. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist, and you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas, how dreary would be the world if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. There would be no childlike faith then, no poetry, no romance to make tolerable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in sense and sight. The external light with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. Not believe in Santa Claus? You might as well not believe in fairies. You might get your papa to hire men to watch in all the chimneys on Christmas Eve to catch Santa Claus. But even if they do not see Santa Claus coming down, what would that prove? Nobody sees Santa Claus. The most real things in the world are those that neither children nor man can see. Did you ever see fairies dancing on the lawn? Of course not. But that's not proof that they're not there. Nobody can conceive or imagine all the wonders there are unseen and unseeable. unseeable in the world. You tear apart a baby's rattle and see what makes the noise inside. But there is a veil covering the unseen world which not the strongest men, nor even the united strength of all the strongest men that ever lived could tear apart. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance can push aside that curtain and view the supernal beauty and glory beyond. Is it all real? Ah, Virginia, in all this world there is nothing else as real and abiding. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia. Nay, ten times ten thousand years from now. He will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives and he lives forever. This story was inspired by a famous editorial. Some of the events and characters have been fictionalized.